I got um, I got I got a video queued up here. So the kind of what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go over uh, like just it's just kind of a video, a compilation of just random uh, parts of some of the jobs we've been doing, and I'll just walk you through it. So uh, some of it's like some taping stuff. Uh, there's fr obviously lots of framing, maybe some drywall. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'll just stop and we'll go and we'll talk about what's going on. I'm here to answer any questions you guys have about uh, the framing, drywall and stuff. So yeah, let's uh, just have a good Sunday. Happy Sunday, fun day. Um, and yeah, man, we'll get to... Hey, what's up, uh, Raj, Raj Singh, man? What's up, bro? Good to see you, man. Welcome, welcome, brother. Good to see you, man. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, Bill, I haven't seen you in a bit either, brother. Yeah, hey, hard boiled. What's up, my man? Good stuff. I haven't been doing a... Hey, Dibs, my man. Hey, right on. Excellent, man. What a party we got. No, that's great, man. Good to see you, bro. Good. Hope everything's well. Um, yeah, I'm just... Uh, just give me a second here. Just uh, finished tweaking a couple things, but uh, we'll hopefully, like, the... Uh, the stream will get uh, pumping here. I I have uh, been doing well actually. I uh, I'm fortunately sorry guys. I haven't done a lot of streaming, and uh, the streaming that I've been doing. Hey, what's up, Anson? Yeah, no worries, brother. Excellent. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Uh, uh because the um, there's some internet problem in my area here. Uh, my streams are quite choppy. So uh, it, it's so it has been so frustrating going back and watching replays and like you're you're in the middle of talking about something and it like skips or cuts or whatever so i'm recording all the streams now uh i should have done this a long time ago but um i was afraid it would interfere with the re with the stream right but now that i got this super computer and all this other equipment and stuff it's uh you know i have i have the resources to be able to do it right um and it's way better quality too so when i re-uploaded the stream from yesterday you can you can tell like holy cow like uh, it was, it's just really much, like way better quality and there's no skips. Like it, it, it's, it's, it's gorgeous. So we're going to keep doing that and then I'll be able to cut videos out like shorter videos or whatever, uh, out of this. Right. Uh, oh, excuse me. So yeah. Uh, just give me a second here. Where are you going? Where's everybody watching from today? Hey, that's okay. Dibs. <laughs> I'm just glad to see you, man. It's good to have you here, brother. Let me just, I'm trying to find, uh, like, a vMix social, like, maybe if I download the actual, uh, like, the thing here. Did, no, I haven't upgraded. No, no, no. No, no, it's still the same. Oh, I got a new laptop, but I don't know if that, uh, um, if that makes any difference. I, well, it does, on my because I'm using my laptop to, like, show the video and all that, and I'm just using it, sending it over HDMI to uh, capture card in the computer, but... Yeah, no, I haven't added anything new to the computer. Uh, it's like every every uh, NVMe two slots full. Everything's full on that. And I got all all the all everything. I don't know if I can upgrade that one. <laughs> California wheel cash, right on, brother. Good to see you, man. Right on. Excellent, man. That's awesome. Good stuff, guys. Good stuff. So it doesn't look like I can. Well, I'm gonna have to uh, worry about it another time. Because I, I don't want it to, I, I it's just so like if somebody asks a question or something uh, or has like a certain comment or I, I can put it up on the screen for everyone to see. Uh, so I, I just, that's been a kind of a bummer, but my, my firewall is something in my firewall settings I've been looking and it's just I, like firewall, like the, the software I'm using now, it's different. Like I can't, I can't go in. There's like, there's no advanced mode. It looks seems like I just can't go in and I'll give certain software permissions and stuff. It's just so, so different now. It's apparently probably supposed to be made easier, but no, nah, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think I see it here anywhere. Um, yeah, I'm not downloading the whole thing. So anyways, that's no big deal. But anyway, so what you guys working on too like, uh, these days? I'll open up Epidemic Pen. We'll get, we're going to jump right into it. We're not going to waste any more time here. Uh, but yeah, we did a, we had a good stream yesterday. Uh, Vancouver, all right, man. I was just in Vancouver too uh, in October. I loved it, man. It was it was really nice. Good good time. Good trip with my son. Uh, we went to a Joji concert. The uh, uh, he used to be the Filthy Frank, you know, but Joji now he's this musician, really good musician. That was fun. It was real fun. Uh, see if I if I go, I, I might. We'll try it on. We'll try it on this like uh, short screen at first. Let me just go into my vMix here. 
Oh, yeah, check this out. I just I want to get a, a shot of that. So let's yeah, this is my it's an anamorphic lens and I don't know it's yeah, fuck. I, I can't I haven't been finding a good angle. I'm just trying to test that out a little bit, but uh, you can see the studio over a while. This is the studio, guys. I got uh, I don't have my website for clothing anymore, but if you guys want some, just send me an email, chris at constructioncronies.com, uh, and we'll figure something out. Um, I just paused the, the, the website because I haven't been selling anything off of it, so I just like, I'm just, it's quite expensive to keep it up every month, so I'm just like, yeah, it's just an expense I didn't need at the moment. Um, right there. Yeah, right on, dudes, right on. I don't know what to say on stream, but let me know what firewall you're using and I'll do some research. Yeah, Zone Alarm. So I'm using Zone Alarm. And uh, yeah, it, I, I'm not able to, even when I like completely shut it off, like it's still, it's not letting something through. I, I need to let Chrome access the network or something like that. Uh, yeah, it's really weird. Uh, it's just a simple, like uh, I just plug in the the like right here right I plug in the address and it just it should work but like is it you should you, anybody even you even dibs if you even put the this address into your browser you should be able to read the chat and put chats up on the screen if you wanted to from where you are right and anyone can be able to do it so that's the high, kind of the idea uh, behind it right oh yeah what the heck's going on here <clears throat> there we go but yeah, it's good old zone alarm. Good old zone alarm. <laughs> but yeah, man. So like this was a compilation of just random clips I had. So I'm like, oh, I don't know what kind of video to make. So we'll just kind of uh, go through it. What I have in here. We'll talk about it. If anyone has any questions or whatever, let me know. Uh, I think right here, right at the beginning, like I'm showing off. Those are your, those are rollers for taping. Okay. So the this this big one here is for rolling inside corners. So when you if you uh, you know, you, you load it and then uh, you put your um, uh, your corner, like your, your folded creased uh, paper on and then roll, you can roll it with this thing, right, uh, on your first coat. But I don't even use it anymore. I have uh, two different flushers now. So I, I use my corner roller. I roll the mud on and of, co of course the, the, the tape, the length is pre pre-cut and I fold it. And so when I, after I roll it on, I stick it in and then I use a flusher. I think it's... Um, like it's like a just small three inch for a first coat and then I got a bigger four and a half for the final coat. So it works really well. So shaft liner fireproofing, uh, framing and commercial. Yeah, so uh, I would just count the linear footage of it and put a price to it. So uh, the shaft liner is, is good stuff because you can charge quite a bit for it. Uh, you could go square, uh, square foot, linear foot, uh, do combination. But um, basically, yeah, uh, maybe or maybe so on that you want to go with a by the square foot and charge like a dollar, a dollar, a dollar five a square foot for the uh, for like the framing, I would think. And then uh, add like yeah, maybe go a buck sixty five, buck seventy five a square foot for the the shaft liner and the framing. And then uh, and then and then you just add your whatever you got for your drywall and taping on the outside of that. So if it's half inch. Uh, you, you know, 60 cents a square foot for the drywall. You can go uh, 55 to 65 cents for taping. Uh, add a dollar to two dollars. I, I, I charge two dollars a linear foot for a corner bead. So if it's a 12 foot corner or 15 foot corner, whatever, okay, I charge two dollars a foot for that. Um, if I'm doing a window sort, for example, okay, I'm charging two dollars a foot for both the corner bead and the, the tearaway, okay, so it's a four dollars a foot in the window, okay, basically. Uh, but yeah, so for fire fire caulking, I don't I don't do a lot of fire caulking. So um, I basically like sometimes I, I can do it, but they, there's fire uh, fire proofing guys that do it now, um, and they and then they do a really good job. Um, I I don't know what would I charge. I, I see I would probably just work it into the price, you know. Uh, but you gotta you gotta make sure you you the, you get the right material for it, the right fire caulking material because. It's like super expensive stuff, okay? Uh, it can be like a hundred or more dollars for each tube or sausage, right? We call them. But yeah, you got to be watch the price of actual material itself. There's good money in just fireproofing, yeah. But yeah, for, for shaft liner, you, yeah, like I was saying, you can go by the linear foot, charge, whatever, or the square foot uh, sometimes because it's, it's always going to be uh, floor to ceiling, you know what I mean? Like uh, floor to deck, uh, and then that deck has to be sealed, okay? 
Um, but yeah, there's no there's no taping on the inside like you know the the shaft liner the sheets just go in and you you snug the stud up. Next sheet goes in, snug the stud stud up. It's actually pretty easy uh, once you get the hang of it, right? Um, but yeah, yeah, sometimes it can get a little tricky, but there shouldn't be like a whole lot of penetrations or anything like that. And sometimes what we end up doing with those shafts is we uh, will frame like an opening on every floor. Um, okay, like a like an actual, like a four by four or two by two or something for so a person can get in and maybe even the duct, like if they haven't put the duct in yet too. And then at the end of the, at the, end of the job, we'll build panels, okay? And these panels will be like, uh, double five eighths on you know fire taped on the inside and then you put uh, like a like you fire tape uh, around the front so that when it when it gets pulled back in the tape sucks it like back into the seam in a, you know what I mean like there's different ways we do that um, so make sure when you're charging for a shaft liner you're also considering if they need those openings uh, left open because you're gonna have to come back later and fill those in right um and th that's like you know every time you mob into something and out, and out you got to charge for that and um and yeah yeah just just think about that think about that right don't uh, don't forget like just assume like oh it all, if it's all done at once you're one price but if you have to go back and like i'm saying seal up openings and or fix things you know then yeah try to plan that ahead of time right um yeah that's how i would price it but yeah, and then and check out the, the this little roller here is for a corner bead, right? So once you get your uh, bead set, okay, this little guy is it's got special rubber. I wonder if I got it here. Uh, no, I don't think so. No, no, it's actually downstairs. But uh, it's got li like the rubber rollers on it have uh, grooves, and it and it matches the outline to the to the corner. So it it'll rub all of like the mud out, make it nice and flush. And then when you're when you're just wiping with your uh, four inch or whatever after you go down the, the the groove to clean it up and then you can clean up the edges if you if you want to or if you need to right but yeah rollers is pretty handy yeah that's the inside right there like I'm saying and that's the outside you can see right like those little grooves it's lined up to the actual corner bead it's pretty handy stuff uh yeah i love new knives yeah and that's your basic like taping knife okay for your when you're laying tape your beads or anything like that you know you just use your nice little four inch beautiful uh 10 inch and a four inch are, your, are probably my most used blades okay um i like i do have a 14 and a 12 obviously 12 so 4 10 12 14 and then you get like more specialty ones like I got cases of blades when I show up. I got two cases of knives, but well, I got skim coat blades and uh, uh, I got skim coat blades that are two feet long, right? Uh, or wide or whatever. And um, like you can get like little specialty knives that can get into crevices and tight little corners and stuff. And it's just, yeah. Uh, but the, the best tool is the corner flushers. <laughs> you know, I love corner flushers, man. Because I, like I say, when I'm loading on mud, I'm using a roller system. So I'm just literally rolling it on. And um, and then I just, yeah, use the right knife to, to swipe it clean, right? And yeah, as you, as the more you tape, the, the more you feel it out, right? So like there's just different ways you hold your knife and put pressure on it that just gets it nice and flat. And, you know, yeah, yeah. You, the more you do it, the, like the less you're going to end up sanding too. Like I hate sanding and... Um, yeah, I try to make it nice and smooth. So I'm only like sanding the edges and then giving it a nice sand, you know, you just don't want any grooves or whatnot. Right. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it, it, it you, you get there. I've been taping now for a few years. Uh, maybe, maybe a few years. This might be my third season taping full time. Like, you know, of jobs. Like I took, I waited a long time till I started accepting the taping part because I, I was just learning and I, and I didn't want to screwed up or anything like that but now i can i'm fully confident i can tape anything right so hey what's up man the the, the baby yeah messiah how are you brother good to see you man good to see you how you doing my man <clears throat> yeah excellent dibs i haven't done that yet but i will i'll check that out I'll check it out for sure. If you don't mind, that'd be great. I appreciate that, bro. This was uh, one of the jobs, so I don't know what the, what uh, like this is. This is the this is set up here is for uh, 
uh, T-bar. Okay, there's two different elevations for T-bar here. And I'm just trying to pull out a pen to kind of give you guys a... Let's go. I love having the advanced... Oh, we'll use some orange. So on this side of the bulkhead, okay, there's going to be one elevation for the T-bar. It's going to come here, and it's going to come on the inside of this bulkhead. And there's just like a little reveal here, okay? Because then the T-bar on the outside here is higher, okay? It's going to be like up here somewhere, and then this, this side's lower. And that's why there's a bulkhead, okay, to, to have the different uh, elevation, to accommodate the different elevations of the bulkhead, right? Um, by Discord, yeah, that'd be great. Yes, yes, please, sir. I do. I don't. I don't do jobs outside of the country. Uh, because I. I'm just. I don't have a passport. I don't have a passport yet. So I gotta get a passport. Um, I'm working on it. It's. Uh, it's just. Yeah. I. I've been meaning to do it. Do it last year. Yeah. Money talks. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> what country? <laughs> That's a really good answer, Meatball. Yeah. But um, I would, I absolutely would, and I, I am looking to go uh, to places. Um, I need to, I need to go, uh, obviously to the states for sure. Uh, but there, there's other places I'd like to visit and and explore, uh, like you know Dubai, of course. Um, but um, yeah, yeah, I was gonna do that last year. Just last year got so busy and got away from us, right? Oh, Saudi Arabia is definitely somewhere I'd love to go. I've been, I've covered so many. Uh, I've done. A, I used to do a lot of live streams, like uh, and, and back in the, when I first started on like different projects and stuff. I was always covering stuff from Saudi Arabia. Definitely, um, probably one of the most interesting places actually in the world right now um, for construction and innovation. Like it's, uh, I, hear, I hear a lot of cool things about Saudi Arabia. Oh, um, I see it. Yeah, how's Meatball doing, man? Right on. But uh, no, that's cool, man. I, I dig it. I would definitely go to Saudi Arabia. Absolutely, I would. Yeah, well, without a without without hesitation. I um, yeah, no, I've, that's uh, definitely on the list for sure. I I would never turn that down. Um, I don't know how hard it probably would be. I don't think you need too much time to get your passport done. I just need to get the paperwork filled out. I'm just lazy. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I just, oh yeah, this is what I what I wanted to show you guys. So. You guys, when you're building like pony walls and stuff like that, a lot of guys are asking how to stiffen them. So if there's no, um, yeah, that'd be great, brother. I would love to be there. Yeah. I see why you are recording the stream. Yeah. You see why I'm recording the stream, right? Cause it's, it's always buffering and, and, and choppy and it's so frustrating. I know. So at least guys, if there's something in it that you're like, geez, man, I wish that didn't skip. At least I'll be uploading uh, replays and stuff. So I will re I'll upload like the full replay. Okay. So that everything I talk about is all in one. And then I'll also cut smaller sections out later and, and maybe add things and, and different footage or whatnot. But yeah, I will be uploading the replay so we can check them out as well. Because yeah, internet sucks in this area. We complain, and and all the neighbors complain. Everyone complains in the area about the crappy service that we get here, and it's awful. Like I got, I have three hundred. Um, like I got, I I don't have a full terabyte or a, uh, sorry gigabyte because I don't need it. Um, but I'm or do I? Did I upgrade? I can't remember. Anyway, or I I'm, at least have three hundred anyways, like a gigabyte, right? So I should have no excuses with the live streaming. When I was up at, yeah, I know, all that time and money, I know, getting my system upgraded, I was so frustrated. Like, when I was living up in the other area, uh, it never happened. It never happened. It was The, the streams were beautiful. It only ha started happening when we moved into this house, so this area. So it's very frustrating. Yeah, but at least it was worth it. Like, the system, I, I was, uh, uh, I'm really, really enjoying it. Um yeah, I was super happy. I can, it's like I get error messages every single stream. It's just so frustrating, guys. I'm so sorry about that. But yeah, just bear with me. And then if there's anything important, we can look at it. We can always go back to the replays. And definitely, yeah, that's why I'm like, I have to record them now. <laughs> at least I have a system that's powerful enough to, to, to handle all of the, like, the load. And when I'm editing 4K video now, it's like smooth as butter. Like I, I edit 8K footage on this machine and it's smooth as butter butter it's it, my, when, my old system it was just so choppy and slow editing 4k and now i just like it's like nothing there's no lag it's beautiful uh but yeah so when you're framing pony walls and stuff guys this is a uh, um the one method that we you can uh this is one this is actually marat's invention marat's a really great tradesman guys like i i, I did really enjoy working with him eh? um he's a really 
um, talented uh, tradesman, uh, super knowledgeable with so many more things than I even know, right? Like he can actually do a lot of different stuff, carpentry and, and different things, you know? So it's, uh, it, it was really nice working with him. Um, but like I said, it's hard construction. The construction business is tough. You know, it's, um, it's a tough one. Like if you watch my stream from yesterday and I uploaded the, that replay too, uh, it, it's tough. Like, you know, it's, uh, it's, we need to make some changes. We can make it better for, uh, for us. Right. But, um, this, this was something I think this is like two plates. Like, uh, so what, what we're doing here is we're adding in, uh, they're just metal braces. Okay, and, and those are tap cons drilled into the, uh, like there's the base plate there, okay? And uh, then those other uh, other ones, I guess they want the snap in there or whatever. And then uh, he had to, he made some modifications with the grinder or whatever, but just to get something in there that stiffens it up. And, and that stiffened it up. And they're both, it was about $60 each though. Like it wasn't cheap. So my my first recommendation for braces on these pony walls is to have like some some iron like actual uh, like to like structural iron in there like this the the structural steel you know and have it in there ahead of time that's how it's kind of the best way i would say the cheapest way you know you just pre-install it drill it down you don't, you only need little like you know like little depending on how high the knee wall is or half wall okay even if you want a floating wall so if you got like a huge high ceiling to like where the deck is high and you want a wall like 10 feet up and you don't want anything showing, okay? You need to have iron, structural iron. So you're gonna have to put two columns and even maybe even a small beam, okay? Um, you know, and then you can frame it out and then there's your wall, okay? It's not gonna go anywhere. And, and you got like, you know, you can't just free float a, a freaking steel stud wall though. It's gonna, it's gonna wobble like this. It's gonna, it's gonna fall down, okay? You, or you need to have some sort of structural <laughs> Uh, meat in it right uh but yeah a lot of guys don't uh like I, i'm serious lots of people don't understand that they think it, it'll just stand up on its own somehow it's uh it's just not the case i should say designers right think that it'll, it'll work that way they never specify any kind of any kind of structural steel for these these knee walls or half walls or floating walls they never do so we're we're left to come up with ideas like this or you know the framing posts up somewhere okay like up to structure yeah, those are the tap cons. You just you're just drilling drilling a hole, and then yeah, just so uh, now this is this is how you miter your corner bead. Okay, so I am basically if you've ever done T bar before, okay, you just you just use the the width of itself to draw the forty five. It's simple, okay. So uh, yeah, just yeah, you gotta have a flat. Make sure you want to miter all of your corners properly, okay, and even like. When, when it's an outside edge, okay, uh, you're, everything's coming, like be, being mitered back perfectly. You don't want to overlap your edges on a corner bead, okay? It's just going to be either bulgy or you're going to have missing parts, right? Like it's going to be empty, you know? It's like it just doesn't work out. You want a nice strong corners, okay, where that metal bead is, is matching all the way and just looks beautiful, okay? When you're doing like, uh, when you're, hey, hey, what's up, Lemon? When you're doing like um, tear away, okay, I'm not. I don't miter that. I just cut. I just cut it straight, okay. Because that's just a little tiny reveal, and a lot of people guys cock that anyway. But when you're when you're uh, cutting the piece that goes inside, you can cut it on a little bit of an angle, okay. And then uh, when you're when the tear away part, you can cut a little tab so you can pull it easy as well, right? So it's not interfering with the other one. But you want it to make sure make, you want to make sure it lines up in the corners, though. You don't want the top piece to be in or out, you know, not lined up. You want that reveal all the way around looking beautiful. Hey, you can see here, like, dude, I, I told you I have problems with my hands. I can't load the the mud. That's why I I wasn't taping because I it just my hands I couldn't do it. I was too much pain, um, with the the just I got a lot of damage in them, right? So, once I got this roller set, I was like, wow, I could tape, right? So I would. That's when I just started going hard with the taping. This is the rollers. And people are like, why don't you use boxes and stuff like that? Well, it's the same problem with the boxes. They're big, bulky, heavy. Like I just. You know, like I just have a harder time with it, right? This is just so lightweight and easy. I just have no issues with it. I love, I love the roller system. <clears throat> there you go. Yeah, yeah. I had, I had that story. They want me to do nine foot high wall without any structural steel. 
in in the weight room probably right <laughs> yeah uh yeah you have to go all the way up on the ends and that in in the solution uh, uh what, what i saw which I, if i remember correctly what you guys did was you painted it black so the the wall underneath was one color or, or wrapped with uh, something and then the the ends that went all the way up to the deck uh, the ceiling was all sprayed black so the they just sprayed the the part above black they painted it black or whatever and it, and it looked really good and it worked perfect right so there, there's different solutions to that problem right but something has to be solid like structurally right you can't just float steel stud right so yeah, and so when you're pricing those kinds of jobs, guys, think about that ahead of time and uh, maybe put an allowance in for some sort of metal or something because I'm telling you, th those braces were $60 a piece, right? <clears throat> but yeah, this is all inside corner taping, right? I'm just, uh, this is when, I j when I'm first starting, uh, I think this is one of the first jobs last season, actually. But I know there's not a whole lot of taping in here. We're, it's going to get right into framing. You'll, you'll see here. Oh, yeah, this next part's cool. I'll, I'll wait. I'll let it play. But, yeah, oh, yeah, see, that shows you the, the roller, okay? So that roller is just rolling the edges of the corner beads so it looks beautiful. Yeah, it's not visible at all. That's right. Yeah, let me look really good. That was a really good answer. So... But yeah, man. Oh man. Yeah. So I'm, I, that's like I was saying too, guys, I, I'm recording the, the stream. So if it's choppy, like we got, like I was saying, we got crap internet in this area. So I'm recording all the streams now. So I'll be able to, I'll, I'll chop the, like the, the countdown timer at the beginning, beginning off and, uh, upload, just upload the video right to YouTube, the full thing. And then I'll cut little segments out and make, maybe make changes, add things or whatever, and make little videos too. It'll be good for more extra content and stuff and shorter bits of information. Right. But yeah, this dang, this dang internet thing has really got to, really got to fix it. You know, I really got to fix it. Oh, and also too, I'm sorry. I, I know somebody, uh, I hope I didn't miss somebody in the chat, guys. I'm just... Oh, I did, too. Chained Elephant. Thank you so much. I, I, I knew it. I knew it. I, I saw that and I meant to say something, uh, but I, I appreciate that. Thank you, uh, Chained Elephant. So this is the lag pole. These things are great. And, and what we're doing here is we're, we're, we're drilling anchors for a cloud. So this is like a... Uh, that, like, is that the cloud there? Or no, that's not the cloud. Uh, anyway, so we built a, there's like a square, this is a, a rectangular cloud and we've marked where it's going to go. Or maybe this is just one of the testing just to show you how it works. And then we cut it out, cut it out, cut it out after actually. But so this is how these things are great. So right from the ground, okay, you, there's one that you can like this that drills into the Q deck and uh, boom, there is your hanger wire. Okay. And, and, um, uh, there's one that has a shotgun, boom, where you can shoot them into concrete, right? Which is fantastic. So uh, it's a really good uh, setup. So you you can get a set of you can get a set of these probably like the one even with the 351 uh, attachment and all that. Like look at he's hanging on it, like hanging on it. It's he's not going nowhere. Um, it's it's super super strong. When we did when we hung the cloud. Okay, we, we use those on each corner. So you guys know how I've been showing you the, the ceilings with that bracing run, okay, the furring bar bracing run where you're screwing it on both sides and then you're using, it's all furring bar and angle, okay? Well, if you wanna add bracing, this is where it comes in, okay? You use that lag pole, you can do it after the fact, just drill it in the hanger wire and then you just wrap it around your, um, around your, your the, the furring bar bracing run. Let me go back. A little bit. Hold on here. Yeah, you can kind of see it. It's hanging here. Okay, uh, where's that marker? All right, so here's our here's our bracing run there. And we got our, our studs running this way, okay? So there's a couple left out here in a, in a, at the request of the duck guys to leave some room for them. But you can see here we got the screws on each, on each like a... Uh, well, I want to call them a, like a stud, but it's a it's a piece of furring bar, uh, like on sixteen inch centers. That's how we screw the um, like the drywall in. Okay, so we're we're every four feet, or if it's less, you're just down the like split it down the middle, 
Okay, we're putting a bracing run here. And this is where it's important on the ends where you have the flipped upside down piece of ring bar cut like four inches wide, like long. And then you have your, your bracing run all the way back to the angle. So it, it snugs right up. So you got your, your angle here. Okay, upside down furring bar here. Okay, and then you got your, your other furring bar running all the way this way. Okay, uh, coming back uh, this way, right? And it's going tight to the back of the angle always. And then you got your screws here, boom. Okay, that's how you brace it on the ends. Okay, so on this is your uh, wall angle. Okay, this this is the angle that goes along the perimeter. Okay, and then yeah, this is an upside down piece of furring bar that just you flip it upside down, and then yeah, you run your other furring bar all the way back to the angle. You want it touching the angle so that it's not going to go this way. Yeah, it's definitely an easier way of doing it, right? So yeah, that's basically it. So you then you're going to you're going to you just t tie it around there on big ceilings. You can you put you do a 2-inch offset with your with your laser, okay? And uh, laser kits have cards, okay? So uh, this is the new laser kit I'm testing out for uh, Dovo. You can get these lasers on Amazon, okay? I I got I should add an Amazon link to uh, to this. So Basically, yeah, this is a this is a mag this is even magnetic. A lot of them are magnetic. You just click it on, and it's it's basically it's always a two inch offset. You can see the middle here, so you want to just check it and uh, make make sure you're tying your the the hanger wire so that the ceiling is nice and, and level. Okay, I know I like this one. You can even set it on the ground and shoot this way. Um, and also, too, guys, I don't know if I showed you. But I sent the got, sent this company an email saying your your stand would be may, way better if it was magnetic. Well, guess what? It is magnetic. <laughs> it, it is magnetic. I didn't know this, so I should have. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe I should have read the manual before I sent them an email. But uh, yeah, I, I couldn't. I didn't even notice that because this this is nice. You can dial it in just like uh, another any other stand, right? Just get it in close, and then yeah, this raises up and down the platform. Okay, you can also clip it right on the angle here, right? You put this on your wall angle. Uh, oh, I, oh, dude, actually, hold on. I got, a, I got the actual thing here. Hold this. Check this out. So this, this here is a, this here is a mock-up. Let me switch back to full cam. So this is a mock-up of, of your ceiling, okay? So you have your, your, this is your perimeter angle, okay? And you can see right there how I got the, the furring bar. It's just flipped upside down here. And then this, this part, this is your brace, and it's going right to the edge, okay? It's right to the edge. And so is this little piece. It's going right to the back of this. This is where the studs are, okay? Uh, the studs you're, you're screwing the angle in through here to your wall and then yeah, you have it nice and tight You got your screw one two here One two there right and and it's gorgeous. Okay, and then same thing so this this will, will clip right there As well, okay, and then you want to do it out of stud right so this back is gonna hit a stud or Hmm I don't know. I don't. I wouldn't want it to flip like this. It might be flimsy, but you'd have to test it out. But you can do that, right? Uh, wall mold for T bar is probably stiffer. Okay, but yeah, you get it close and and you can do that. And then, like I'm saying, yeah, just put your. Uh, you can set your laser at a two inch offset. And if it's a big ceiling, check it with your card when you're tying your wires. It's it's beauty. It's beauty. But yeah, I do. I do like this laser. Right? It's got a remote and everything. It's nice. It's got two batteries, even. I, you know, like two rechargeable batteries. They're like Sony NPF batteries. Uh, it's really nice. Right? It's got the charger. The green glasses with it. Uh, but yeah, it's got a calibration card and all that. But yeah, check this out. If I go, or let me unlock it. Okay. Right. I love these 
I love these because of the, the corners, right? When it's got two lines this way, okay, you can shoot your corners up, which is beautiful. I, lo I love these lasers. Instead of like the Dewalt one I have, where is that? I think I might have it right here too. Yeah. <clears throat> right? So this Dewalt one I have, it only shoots one, right? One of the uh, verticals, okay? It only shoot, and that's a bummer. If it had one on the front here, it'd be way better, right? You want the, you want them that shoot to shoot up the corners, okay? So if you're buying line lasers, try to get one that has the like the hor like the horizontal, right? Hor vertical, sorry, dumbass. The the two verticals on the front and on the side. That way you got a 90, you can shoot up. It's beautiful, okay? Because, yeah, this is a pain in the butt. You need, still need to pin up, like, or have one line laser shooting one way and one the other, but or or use a pin laser on the corner. You know what I mean? <clears throat> oh, yeah. Anyways. Cool, man. All right, where's that? Uh, here it is. Yeah, I like that. Remote's neat. No, it's quite quite handy. Quite a what quite a thoughtful uh, kit. You can get these on Amazon, guys. Dovo lasers, okay. And they're they're not like not going to cost you an arm and a leg, which is nice. <laughs> All right, going back, going back. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. It's pretty straightforward. It's pretty pretty basic stuff, but. You know, just to kind of give you guys an idea of the different tricks and, and, and things. So this is this is a brand new job. Um, what like th these this job like these jobs are, are so are are small enough. They take one day to frame. Um, you know the, the this the ducks are always interesting, okay? Because they're always somewhere where they're not supposed to be. So you always have to get creative around them. You know. Are you serious, Dibs? Oh man, dude! Like sh we're just talking about shady bastards the uh, yesterday. Um, like, was it just they did they do a poor poor job in in the sun deck, Dibs? Like, w was that it? All right, so yeah, and check this out, right? So the the drawings here when you're when you're doing your when you're doing your layouts or estimating or whatever the this is your wall legend, okay? If you're the wall builder and the ceiling builder, you're gonna have wall types and ceiling types. So you're gonna find out what they are. Uh, uh, and then that's how you calculate your, you know, you, then you calculate linear footage by your elevations and stuff like that, or your ceiling heights. And you got to know which walls go all the way to the deck, which ones need to go just above ceiling height, whatever. Okay. Which ones are exposed with no ceiling. Okay. Cause then it has to go all the way up and be drywalled and taped finished for paint. So yeah, it's just a couple of tricks, right? So I'm going to go over this in great detail. I got a lot of really good material on layout and like um, I got, I was just, I just downloaded a whole bunch of very awesome uh, data like information for us. So I'll, I'll be going over that on one of my streams on layout and like the like definitions in terms and stuff like that. So you guys understand the contract documents, the blueprints and stuff better. Like, like I can just see my, my stream going haywire. Like it's, like I, it's just see it going yellow, blinking yellow and buffering and <laughs> sorry guys, I know it's got to be frustrating for you guys. But like I said, there will be the replay will be uploaded in full. Ah uh, yes, I know the I know the kind I know the type. Yeah, right, right. Hey, OG, what's up, man? How's it going, man? How's how's uh, the West Side? How's the West Coast? This is another another way to do furring wall, which is pretty straightforward. So that's a demising wall, and what what we've done here is we've literally just put in like the spacer studs every ten feet or whatever, and screwed it screwed the track with inch and a quarters right into the wall, right into the demising wall. Simple as that, right? And then, yeah, you can see here, this was a big mess. Let me back it up a bit. Uh, hold on here. So, yeah, this back, this track at the top, okay, we're just using inch and a quarter drywall screws. It's like gauge steel, and we're literally just screwing that to the demising wall. That's it, right? 
It's cool we can live with it. Yeah, right? Oh my god, I'm sorry to hear that. That's uh that's that's awful, bro. I'm sorry to hear that. But yeah, I do know the type, those sun decks that come out and they're they're literally right on like you got a door or a window or something, right? But it's and you yeah, they just really on the uh on the right onto the roof. Yeah. But yeah, let me just show you here, right about here. Yeah, so you can see this mess. Okay, this mess here is a problem because this is a hallway here. This this is is supposed to be a drywall all the way up, and and ready for paint. But then this big ugly unit will be in the way. There's a there's a wall coming off here somewhere at some point, okay? So there's a clip. We're going to install a clip here. And then there's going to be another wall coming out and joining to there. And like I say, the drywall will run through and then a floater, like a slapper, will be thrown in, okay? And, um, but yeah, so what we ended up doing is actually shooting track here and then closing this all in to the back wall, okay? Because, we, you know, that was an extra. Excuse me. Uh, and then this duct here uh, ran ran through the hallway at the top. No big deal. But yeah, that's just that's just how they wanted it, how it was designed. So instead of but instead of doing a ceiling in the hallway, we just did like a bulkhead type thing and closed this off. But yeah, you can kind of see, right? Like you just got to get steel in as as best you can. It was, and sometimes it's hard. Like on this edge here, uh, this side here, I think it's almost right at the very end of the run. And uh, we're going to see when we turn the camera around. So, you know, I think we might have been lucky enough to get a stud all the way up on the other side. You head it out. And then, you know, and then this top track here, okay, I, it just runs loose. Uh, I, I put a shoe on this side, screwed it into the stud that goes all the way up. And then I'm shooting Hilti shots into the I-beam here, okay? And then I run a stud here with into this track just to have more... Um, Backing, okay, in case we had to drywall around it or whatever, okay. But uh, let's move it on, move it on. But yeah, you can see the Q deck as well at the top. Uh, while we're at, while we're on this. Oh, sorry. Let me just go one last little thing. Uh, the clips. Right, so the the, the Q deck, which is this stuff, okay, it runs like there's runs, and it runs one way or the other. So when your wall doesn't land, like it lands off of one, like in the middle of of a flute, or not, there's not enough meat to screw it on to a the like a flat of the flute, right? Where you're putting clips in, okay, clips, 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 to capture your track, and in between these. Uh, big like uh, spans that could be four feet, five feet. You you want to have three, one in each, one on on the end and one in the middle. Okay, uh, just good practice. The more the more the merrier, of course. But you don't have to go too crazy with it. Okay. But yeah, just to show you that real quick. But yeah, you can see the the amount of lasers uh, that Murad had was incredible. You know, we had so many. Then together, we had a lot of re uh, lasers. Yeah, you can see there how it gets really tight on the other side. And there is another, or that could be the wall there. Yeah, that no, there's another wall. That's right, that is the wall. So there, there, you'll see on the layout that the it comes into the end of the of the hallway there, and it's the bathrooms. And so yeah, we just basically, uh, yeah, you can see there it is. That's the other side of the hallway. And after that wall was in, okay, boom, we just just then bulkheaded out that. Uh, back ducts to make it uh, hidden. And then, so stilts, I, uh, I know that stilts are illegal in a lot of places, but if you're, if you are comfortable on them, they, they're pretty handy in, in situations. Like I definitely know stilts with T-bar are handy. Um, but uh, like, yeah, dudes, it's pretty, pretty handy. This is, I think, what's going on here? There's something going on here. I forget what it is, but we're, we got a, a, a lower height wall 
that's going to be like six inches above uh, ceiling height because back here there's all t-bar going into a full height wall and that's a splice right there fishtail splice okay pre-cut to length uh, and you got your end wall studs already screwed in okay to the demising wall boom 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 so you track your end studs screwed into the walls okay um, <clears throat> Trying to remember what is going on here. I I, th I have a feeling. Um, I have a feeling it tied into. I I'm not. I don't know. I think he put one stud all the way up to capture this for some reason. I I I know there's a doorway right. Oh yeah 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 yeah. There's a doorway right here at the on this side. So, uh yeah he he's got a the end is going all the way up to the deck when it didn't have to be but. Uh, back actually let me pause it for a second um, this is kind of what we were talking about earlier by finding some meat some some structure so basically from this point forward okay this this wall didn't have to be all the way up okay it could have went down to the to the t-bar height but because it's one wall we just ran it the whole way okay and then on the end here we have those two studs going all the way up because it's there's a door right here okay so it's going to be strong for the door. These are all metal frame doors, okay? Uh, at the end, they, they use expandables in these jobs. So you drywall it and you just squeeze it together over the, uh, the drywall and you screw it in that way, right? So this header here, he's going to screw into the, to, the, to the wall stud here. And then he's got a shoe on this end to capture the, here. And that's why we got the laser on this to make sure it's not, it's not going to pull out, okay? He's going to tight, tighten it and screw it so that it's not going to move, okay? It's, 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 it's going to work out really nice. But you'll see the whole process here, actually. Yeah, I know people got hurt using them. Yeah, they did. You're right. Um, a lot of people were getting hurt on them. And I know that's... I remember when they banned them in Ontario. Yeah, a lot of people were getting hurt. Well, that's funny, yeah. But let's see. I want to see something here. Uh, I'm going to switch cam... I don't know if you can you see it on there but yeah oh this is this guy here i want to talk about this guy after too we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna do an unboxing here at, at the end uh of the stream we're gonna do a little unboxing oh let's go back <laughs> and if the video is too hard to see guys i can go full screen you at any time too let me know i can i can put the video to full screen as well you don't have to see me on the side i can go full screen with the video if you if you need but yeah that's what's going on there that's why he's got the laser there Yeah, I got my co I got coffee, buddy. Cheers. <laughs> Good for you, man. Yeah, I've been drinking a lot, a lot of. I've been drinking coffee a little bit more than normal lately, which is not so good. But you know, it's better than drinking beer, I guess. <laughs> Wait. Uh, yeah. What's he doing here? He's gonna check. That's using. He's using a straight edge to check to make sure that that end isn't popping out. I should shut this down or quiet it down. The boy's going to spend eternity in hellfire because he doesn't believe in God. If there's no God, who knocked me up? Hey, yo, I need your help. I've been watching a lot of this uh, cartoon called Forget About It or whatever. Forget About It. It's hilarious. <laughs> About this, like, uh, mafia guy that moves to uh, Saskatchewan or whatever from New York. It's hilarious, man. But, yeah, you can see also here as well, this is uh, a full height wall. So on the outside here, you'll see I'm going to be able to bulkhead. And, um, but I, I'm going full height straight across uh, for a structure, okay? 
Uh, and then there's a different height of T-bar as well on the others on the outside of this wall as there is in the kitchen. Okay, the kitchen T-bar will be at one height, and then it's a different height on the outside. There's no door going in here. This is just a drywall returned opening. Okay, uh, so yeah, we got put corner beads, everything on that. But yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. But you can kind of see where you start. We start with the full height walls, and then we work our way out. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, full height walls, low height walls, bulkheads, ceilings, right? Or ceilings and bulkheads, you know, it's a, it's a process, right? Uh, we go and you do the metal framing, and then you got to leave, right? The, then the trades will go in and do all, get all their stuff in the walls, and then you come back and you can insulate, drywall, and tape right and then you got to come back for t-bar so when you're pricing jobs like you gotta you all you gotta you always gotta take into consideration that you're gonna be mobbing in and out of these okay you go in for a day and do the framing and then you could be gone for a week or two okay while the plumbers and electricians have at her okay um it's usually about a week turnover for these kinds of jobs uh, so you got to keep that in mind right so it's nice to have other jobs okay you frame 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 go back drywall 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 and you know drywall tape drywall tape whatever and then you go back and t-bar 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 type thing okay so scheduling jobs is is tricky you know because you always want to be busy but you don't want to have too many things on the go where you can't you're, you're neglecting jobs and stuff okay but yeah it's so funny oh my god this guy's so funny i those the stilts freak me out so much <laughs> Yeah, you know it's uh it beats it, i mean it beats like the you can, like if you like the baker for example you it's so tough to get in and out of rooms and stuff and bakers are are you know they're kind of a pain in the butt they're they're real handy but they're they're also a pain in the butt a little bit right so it might might must i don't i don't use stilts because i'm definitely not coordinated enough to do that i don't think you know what i mean like i, I don't want to fall and break my face or my my legs you know on, on those things but um, lighter weight guys, uh, how, are like really good on stilts, I find, but. Yeah, there you go. So he's lasering up with the line laser, the other side of the door opening, right? So though that end wall there, he's got two studs there with the shoe. Okay. And it's like pulled back with, I think it's pulled back tight. So it's not going to bounce in and out. But when you're drywalling, you do that flat face first, nice and flat. Uh, but you got to make sure even when you're drywalling and putting in doors, you're just lasering in everything. Okay. Throw away your levels, guys. Throw, levels are no good for nothing but straight edges. Okay. But yeah, you shouldn't be using levels for any of this stuff. Okay, and I don't even use levels to, for the first sheet of drywall anymore. I, I use laser for everything. I, I do not bring a level to a job. I do not own a, like, I, I think I have levels somewhere, but I, I haven't pulled a level out in years, guys. I do not use levels for anything, <laughs> okay? I use lasers for absolutely everything. When I'm hanging shelves or doing anything, like, it's lasers, 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 lasers. I never, ever use levels, ever, Okay. Uh, I think plumbers might use might use them. I don't know. <laughs> they might use uh, might use them now. Still, I don't know. I'm not a plumber. That's that's the one thing I real. I'm not like I can do electrical and lots of stuff like roofing and and like uh, um like sheet metal. Uh, but plumbing, I'm not so good with. But being a homeowner, I'm starting to learn things about plumbing. Like I can do toilets and sinks and stuff. Of course, right? I can do all that. Uh, but uh, right now there's the whole tree underneath my sink there. I got to replace that. So I'm going to do that. And, um, I've been messing around with certain things and I'm learning a little bit, but damn, man, like the, the shower, like, holy crap, the, the cartridge in the shower, uh, went out. So, you know, it's a simple, cheap part where you can just replace where, you know, the hot, when the hot water starts coming, you know, it's just so, so, so crazy, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not the good, greatest with the plumbing, but. I do know that when there's like vents and, and uh, like drains in, in a wall, you should go six inch. 
Why, why try to stuff everything in a three and five eighths wall? I don't understand it, right? Like, I, I know the water lines now are flex, like with the, with the pet, with the, is it the PEX or something, right? But the flex, they're flex pipes, the water lines, which are in handy. But what, 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 like, for example, what happened on the last drop, um, was the guys, like these guys kept running their pipes on the inside of the, inside of the studs. Okay. Hold on. Stop here for a second. Okay, so I'm going to be moving on to the bulkhead here. And I know I preach this all the time, guys. I know I do. Let's go green this time. But you can see my clips set up right here. Okay, so I've laid out... I always lay out my bulkheads on the ground first, and then I just laser them up. Okay, some bulkheads are crazy detailed. Like if you've seen the one I did at the at that dessert place, it was for the millwork, and it was built out and had different designs. That was a really cool bulkhead um, out of 20 gauge, okay? These light weight, light gauge uh, uh, bulkheads, though, uh, you gotta just, uh, you know, they're just flat usually, right? I can, yeah. So I, I'm not, I don't trust my soldering. That's for sure. But uh, I definitely don't trust my soldering. I, I could practice. I could practice, but like it took a while. Like when I first was trying to solder uh, copper lines, I didn't know. Like I didn't know you had to use flux and you know sand it and flux and all that and blah blah and youtube was just starting it was just a new thing and uh that's how ultimately i'm like oh you know maybe there's a youtube video on it this was a long time ago and i found out about flux and all that right so but yeah these are your clips uh you got you lay it out on the floor i can already see my my line here on the on the on the clip so the stud is going to come down and what i do is i put these clips right at my elevation so i know uh, when I put my laser on it, the, these two clips here are are right at elevation. So I put my stud, when I cut my stud, I stop it a quarter inch up from the bottom of the clip here. And so when I put the track on, it just goes right to the bottom of my clip. And that's just how, that's just, just to, you don't have to do it like that. The clips can be anywhere and you can add extra clips too. You can put one in the middle as well. Okay, because you're going to screw the stud in at the top track. And then you're going to screw it in at the bottom here on the clip. So if you add one in the middle, you can also screw it in in the middle. That's it, right? Um, and then you can also, uh, the clips also can act as a corner for your drywall because you're not going to drywall through. There's no floater there, right? So you're going to stop your drywall on, on either side. And uh, this way, right, you also have something to screw your corner into. Uh, the drywall, and it's going to be strong. It's not going to sunk like uh, be pushed in at all, right, if you know what I mean. So the more clips you do, you know, you don't have to add a, a corner stud here. You know what I mean? Let me uh, dump that. But yeah, dibs. Oh man, I I remember when I first started plumbing, I was I used to, I got wet a lot cuz you know, I forget to shut the main off or something, you know. <laughs> Just like, oh god. Plumbing was my was my nemesis for the longest time. Kind of still is, but Yeah, and there you can see the one side's already done. I've got the bulkhead done there, just straight off the wall. The top track's in. Okay, so when I when I what I'm gonna do? Yeah, noob, exactly. Uh, is you shoot your laser, and the if the if the the ceilings are sloped quite a bit, right? You're gonna have to have different numbers for your for your stud height. So what what I'll do is I'll go and I'll pick a few heights, cut them, and then. Um, and then I'll put those in, put the, get the track, the, like the skeleton outline done. And then I'll go back and I'll measure my height so that like, you know, you, you when you're doing bulkheads, you don't want them to be super loose, okay? You want them to be three quarters of an inch shorter than your overall. If you're getting in bigger than that, you're going to have like, they're going to get looser, right? Like it's just at the edges of the steel, it's flimsy, right? So you want it to be kind of snug as, as possible because there's no deflection in it, in these bulkheads, okay? So yeah, you take off like a half inch, that gives you a quarter inch to top and bottom, you're good, you're good, okay? Three quarters of an inch is, is you know, you're starting to get too much, too, too much off, okay? But basically, yeah, just work your way uh, inside out, okay? So you, you're not blocking yourself off. And yeah, like line laser, boom. And you're shoot, and I'm shooting up, uh, um, Shooting all, like, screwing in all the track. I think I got really lucky on this one here. And if they land on a flute, like, right on a nice, on a flute, you're slapping, right? Like, it's so easy. 
on this on this inside here that I'm working on at the moment, I um uh it, the the height on the inside is like T bar is at say ten feet, so I don't have to really go all the way up. I'm shooting it onto those iron those I beams and adding adding some uh, braces, but I'm going up all the way when I can. But you can see where I am. I'm also shooting in uh i'm shooting into those i beams as well uh but yeah so programmer 642 my man what's up do you have any videos detailing a metal stud corner with a hm frame i got a project uh coming up soon and i am confused on how to anchor it all yeah i will i can show you how to do that actually just and what i can actually show you that uh i can i can show you that right now actually i do have videos yes so I, I have a video, um, let me pause, or let me just pull, here, hold on a second. Pause this for a second. Well, bear with me here, guys. Uh, just go back here for a second, and, I, and I'll go back into here. Uh, if I go here. Um... Here's one video right there. And I got another one here as well. Uh, and I can also I can also draw you a diagram if you need to as well right now. It's actually not too hard. Uh, it's just people, sometimes you're gonna see people will argue with me on the layout, okay? And my layout is the most standard way of doing it, okay? There's some some regions that do it a little differently where, where they'll have like the, the long piece on the door side, right? Where I always have, I always put the short piece on the door side, not because I like to have that floater in there. So when the drywall goes in and the floater, the slammer or whatever goes in, I, I screw it in this way and it gives it that strength right there at the door, okay? And then your leg is just a little tiny piece and you just pop it in. It's super easy, right? You got, you put your buck piece in and then your legs, just a little snap in piece. It's beautiful. Okay. And then you got your hook piece on the other side. It's simple, it's standard, simple, beautiful. Okay. So if you're putting in like the, like the, the, the piece in on the, like the other way and, uh, and then slamming the, slamming the floater up this way. Okay. And screwing it in. Okay. Your piece is like, it's going to go into the frame. It might be easier to do it that way. It's just not as, it's just not as strong. If in my opinion, it's not as neat and quick. It's, it's easier to have your floater going in this way. Cause then you have your full sheet, right? Full sheet, full sheet. It gives you more options for layout and, and minimizing your taping joints that the way that I show you to do it. Okay. Um, but it's tough. Yeah. You want to make sure that your door frames, you have those at the moment of framing. Cause you want to, you you want to drill them in, okay? If you're if they're if they're welded frames, okay, you have to have them there while you're framing, okay? Because that way you're gonna you're gonna pin bolt two pin bolts, inch and a quarter pin bolts on on both sides of that frame, okay? And then um, yeah, and then you can frame your your wall and header around it, if you know what I mean, okay? You want to have those frames in, okay? Otherwise, you got to use expandable frames, and that that'll go in after drywall. <clears throat> Excuse me. But yeah, make sure have the frames there. If they're welded frames, you have them there while you're framing. It's a must. Um, let me see if I got um, uh, doors. I, I know I got videos on doors too, but let's just go doors. Uh, actually, this one's kind of interesting for doors. Uh I don't know what I don't know what this video is here, but it might have something with the doors. Like, uh, it does show doors here, but uh, let me. Add, I'm gonna add two more videos. You might just a just a check and see. Uh, there's this guy, and then there's this guy. Yeah, this this I think this guy here is pretty good. This one that I'm about to link shows the doors. I, I hope it shows me installing them, but it's been a while since I've seen these videos, but. Yeah, hopefully that helps, my man. You're very welcome. Anytime, anytime. That's what we're here for, brother. 
uh, yeah, you can see on this bulkhead here, it's just blah, blah, blah. It's just a time lapse, okay? So I got my, uh, my laser here, and I'm shooting it right at elevation, no offset at this point, okay? I'm shooting it right at elevation. It's, it, it, I got the laser behind me, so I'm not, it's not being, inter it's not, nothing's interfering, okay? Um, and, and when you want to check this swing after, okay? You're gonna do it. You're just gonna add a. You can use a pin laser or put a line laser on it. Whatever, okay. And then brace it. Um, and then, yeah, you can see on the inside part here, we're gonna have um, like on here is T-bar, and on the outside here, this whole area is is drywall all the way to deck, and it's uh, taped ready for paint. Okay. So this this side of the bulkhead, drywall all the way up, taped ready for paint. Same thing, it's going to, with the part that returns down here, all uh, drywall all the way to deck, ready for paint. And like I said, T-bar on the inside, so. And then, yeah, just added it, adding it as I go, right? And then I'm tying in my corner there at the end. And uh, you'll see, you'll see as I, as I go here. I could, I wish I could speed it up a little bit more, but I might be able to here. Settings, oh. I could put it higher quality, actually. Yeah, let's speed it up a little bit faster, yeah. No, no, I don't have that. I don't have that. No, I don't. Sorry, programmer. No, I don't. Uh, I don't install the hardware. Uh, we j we don't do that. We just install the frames. I'm sorry. Uh, um, there, actually, though, uh, le uh, uh, I'm um, so somebody. I I don't, I don't know if I who if I, what I'm allowed to say, but there is a s subscriber to the channel, <laughs> and we might be working together here in Edmonton. And he does do that. He does all the hardware and everything. So um, if he doesn't mind, we maybe we could do a video on it, and and I'll be able to co uh, come out with s some of that. Because I know doing the hardware is is a little bit tricky. It's more like you don't want to mess up any holes, like where you're drilling in two of the steel doors, and you don't want to mess that up, okay? Because you you know it's an expensive mistake. So I just I don't I tend to stay away from that <laughs> that that part, right? But yeah, that would be interesting though to 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 get a video on that. But I appreciate I I apologize. I don't not at the moment. But then yeah, boom boom boom, corners tied in, and then you can see the brace there on the back side. Okay, that's the that's just to stop it from from wiggling, right? And you got your corner. I got the inside there shot up, but hey, they're exact. It has to be exact. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Lemon, my man. <laughs> Yeah, right on. <laughs> yeah, all depends on what they want to install. Okay, excellent. Yeah, Lem Lemon would know about that programmer 642. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right on, brother. But yeah, you can kind of get to kind of get an idea of how it's coming together there. Uh, if I just actually just go back a little tiny bit. Why is it doing that? Oh, I went too far ahead. Yeah, so you can see here, right? So I'm shooting these pieces that go in uh, uh, from... If you need to close it, uh, to do a closer. Yeah, that's what I mean. Closers, yeah. Closers uh, are... Yeah, I get it. I kind of get, like... So, and, and that's the thing, like the hardware has to match up the, the holes in the door and like the opening, like the drill, like the hole sizes and stuff. Like there's templates or something, right? But more time to install. Yeah, those, cl those closure, yeah. So fire rated auto closer. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, you can see, right? So when I'm putting in my 16s, I, I, so on a bulkhead, you can definitely move them over and stuff. But in this situation, I'm like, you know what? Forget that. Uh, why would I do that when I can just because on this back side on not this side I just drew it on but on the back side it's just going to be a strip of drywall okay it's not going all the way up it's going to be like a like a six inch strip on the inside and that's it this whole bulkhead is just to carry that six inch trip uh, strip and then there's a ceiling in here okay but you'll see that in a second but what I did is I gone along here and I've shot it these 
into the I beams, okay? This part and this part. And I also shot this one and I extended this track across and shot it into that I beam just for more strength. And it, it, it'll, you know, it'll, it'll freaking, it'll make it stronger. And, and stronger is good, right? And you'll see more why in a second here. And the duct is kind of always in the way, right? The ducts are always in the way. So, yeah, they're like those are going to come, like, bend back inwards in towards the inside of the kitchen, right? So as long as you're good on the outside and it's not exposing. But it has. Sometimes it has. You, yeah, you'll see, you've seen some streams where there's, like, corners of ducts on the outside of my bulkhead. I can't do nothing about that. And then this is the finished side. So <clears throat> I'm not going to – I'm going to skip – Skip it, skip it closer. Okay, you see, I'm I'm hanging I'm hanging studs and I'm tracking it all out. I'll get the skeleton done, the the tracks tied in at the corner, and then I'll go go back and I'm gonna check out my uh, stud heights, and then I'll cut those, go back in, put them in. And then I screwing it in front and back, squaring them, making it all nice, right? Uh, making sure you screw it in because if you don't screw in the back sides of the studs, they can they're gonna they can bend in it forward, right? So the track already can bend back and forth, yeah, so the the more you can minimize that, it's good. It's good for it's good for you, right? So, uh, crimp. I don't use crimpers. Uh, the only time I use crimpers is like if I have to, um, like if there's something like I can't get a screw in on the backside, right? Uh, like uh, you know, sometimes on frost walls, you wanna you wanna crimp the backsides, but. Um, um, but you know, like it, I don't, I really don't use crimpers. They're, you know, they're not that useful. <clears throat> they're really not. I, I, I just find like you put a light gauge screw, uh, putting a screw in, like I, like I have a handful of screws. Boop, 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 boop. It's super fast, right? Crimpers are big, you know, bigger. You gotta get in there and crimp, crimp, crimp. So if it's something that needs to be fastened and you can't reach, then I'll pull out my crimpers. I, I haven't pulled my crimpers out in years, guys. So. But yeah. <laughs> and then you can also see the brace in the back, right? Where I've shot it into the eye, into that, into that eye beam and it goes down and captures that wall from, and it stops it from swaying. Okay. So we want it to be full structure. When the drywall's hung on there, it's beautiful, right? Yeah. See, nice and straight, but you can see you screw it in front and back, making sure everything's good. And that's the thing, guys. When you're when you're lasering in uh, the this track, okay, you can use your uh, framing square to uh, square the front uh, back. So if you're if you're la if you're la lasered in, okay, and and straight, you're good. All you need to do is shoot that elevation, and then you can use your square to frame it back to the back side, okay. And that's simple. It's simple, simple, simple. But yeah, that gives you an idea, right? So that's going to be drywalled all the way up on that side. And then boom, there it is at the end with the with the ceiling in. And uh, you got your braces back here, okay? Like I said, there's just a small six-inch strip of drywall going on the inside of this bulkhead. And then the ceiling gets drywalled. And then the outside. Well, outside, I always start top down, always, guys. So on this situation here, I'm always going to drywall the outside uh, like all the way up to the deck and then the ceiling goes on last and the reason why is that joint on the end okay I want it to be flat on the bottom okay I don't want that joint it's just better for corner bead I don't want that that joint on the bottom I want so I don't drywall first and then run my sheets down no 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 it's it's you do the front first always work your way top down top down okay always do your ceilings then your walls, you know, it's just top down always. And then there's another knee wall situation, right? So I do know we, um, uh, he went back and put in those metal poles. Okay. You can order, uh, they're like pony wall braces, right? From, uh, like, like your supplier, Bailey makes them. They're they're pony wall posts, and I and I think they're expensive, like very expensive, and they're just like little posts made 
for uh, knee walls, right? You can get them for six inch walls, three, like three and five eighths walls, whatever, right? Uh, I don't think you get them shorter than three and five eighths walls. Uh, I think it starts at three and five eighths, and and then there's six inch ones. Uh, I, I don't know if there's a, bigger ones. I'm not sure, but they're expensive, and you gotta pre-order them because they're not in stock. They they don't they don't keep them in stock, which is so bizarre. Because we build a lot of a lot of, of a lot of knee walls, and they're never spec'd. They're just they're never spec'd and never thought ahead, right? The designers are just like, oh, whatever. But a lot of times, the guys, when you're building them, the contractor is gonna be like, oh, that's too wobbly. Well, when you when you look at the drawing, okay, you got your wall, and then they got it's just all it does is it, it the millwork will attach to it, okay? It's just like an outline for the millwork. Right, they'll plywood it and then and then butt their millwork in, and it's going to be a big shelf. So like it, that'll be strong, right? So it doesn't have to be strong. It's like uh, when you're doing a wood house, framing a house, and you got that little knee wall for the kitchen island. You know what I mean? It's just loosely in there. There's no structure in there, and they just leave it loose because the cabinets are going to be attached to it, right? The countertop cabinets, it ain't going nowhere after. It's just that frame to catch your cabinets, right? That's all it is. And then this is a different type of ceiling where you can just track it out, okay? So sometimes it's easier just to order all one material. So if you're ordering three and five eighths and standard track, just order a little bit extra for the ceilings, okay? Instead of or, like switching it up and getting furring bar and angle and stuff like that, okay? Like you can just do it with all one material. And it's the same thing. Track it out and 16s, boom, boom, boom. If you wanna add a, a brace on the top, you can, right? Same thing, furring bar or whatever, boom, boom, a stud upside down, boom, boom. Just make sure it runs side, like front to front, you know? Stupid uh, uh, mop sinks. <laughs> Damn what, mop sinks? <laughs> Don't get me started on mop sinks. <laughs> But yeah, like those 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 walls, like like contractors would be like, oh, it's flimsy. You got to do something, make it strong. It's not I'm like, what do you want me to do? I'm not a structural guy. You know what I mean? Like, if you wanted it to, wanted it to be strong, you should have specified some structural steel in there so I could attach to, right? But there are ways to do it. But don't do it for free, okay? Ask for more money, because I'm telling you that that once you start adding in those structures, it, it's like I'm telling you those little braces we did on the one were sixty dollars each, right? And I think we needed four of them. So hey, that's 250 bucks right there after tax. So yeah, don't be doing it for free, right? But yeah, if they want them structurally sound, we don't do structure, you know? You <laughs> stole them off handle. <laughs> oh man, oh man, oh man. I know I know a guy I like to, to break a mop handle and beat with. <laughs> Man, oh man. So high side, what he's doing there is, when he at first there is you always go off your high side. Okay, so what I mean by that is you 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 measure up uh, whatever, uh, like 82 half for your header, for example. Okay, uh, you make a little tick and you, you put it on both sides of the of your door opening. And whatever, when you put the laser on, okay, whichever one of those marks is, is higher, that's the mark you go from, okay? So if you're on the lower mark, you raise it up to the higher mark, and then, yeah, you mark the high side, okay? Always go off the higher side. <clears throat> and that's what that means, right? Find your high-low side. Oh, uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, PHB ink. So... You're a wood, you're a wood framer. And you got a, a metal parapet to frame, right? So it's like a metal, a metal parapet, basically. Yes. So what what you're gonna do is you're you're right. Yeah. There's only there. You're gonna order standard track only, okay? Because you're not gonna you you. So when by when you're doing those parapets, sometimes you're at, it's at the end of the job. So you you could um, you could use scraps. So there could be like lots of slot tracks uh, left over and stuff, and you're just using it up. But you're not screwing into the through the slots. Okay, you're you're gonna you're you don't you don't want that track to to have deflection, right, or any kind of you, you don't want that. So you're you're gonna screw in the studs through there. And yeah, all you're gonna do is cut six inch pieces of steel. Okay, and you flip them, flip them up, and, and that's how you join your butts together. Three inches on either side, okay, and just boop, boop, 
shoot shoot it down uh and 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 then this way right you just simply put screws in the side so two screws in in the side flanges and two uh four whatever on the tops for and that's how you do it just just take cut your steel because you're going to be using heavy gauge steel too probably <clears throat> so you you just yeah you just cut uh, tr the, the studs and put them in and then that's how it's done um let's see here i got let's see if i can find something to show you exactly oh yeah you got it you know what you're doing you simple yeah 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 it's it's really easy yeah i love parapets actually they, they're they usually pay really well and uh they're pretty easy yeah yeah, it, and sometimes roofs slope and whatever, but if you already know what you're doing, probably you just set your uh, like a rotator laser up somewhere in the middle, okay? And if you and if your parapets are different elevations, okay, you literally just you just frame out um, uh, like one elevation at a time, basically. You know, it's simple as that. Yeah, slope. So yeah, set up a rotator. Uh, rotating lasers are the best with the readers for that. The the, the best for especially big roofs. Um, you could use line lasers, maybe. I, I've never really. I always use a, a rotating laser for the, for parapets. So, but yeah, because yeah, it slopes, and you want to just get 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 your outline. So you go around, get get your skeleton outlined, and then you have a laborer coming in behind you, cutting the studs, putting the studs in. Okay, so you go ahead and get the the bottom uh, bottom track on. Okay, you're shooting up an offset from the because you're matching it up to the outside wall. Okay. And uh, yeah, so you just laser laser it up from the like your wall because you want to make sure your parapet lines up to your exterior walls, and then yeah, you go along and set all the tracks and and then do the frame, okay, and and then you have a laborer coming in and, and cutting and, and putting in studs for you right behind you, if that makes sense, <laughs> and then you know the plywooding and then you just plywood it, uh, and then yeah, make sure make sure though when you're when you're putting it in on the base, uh, you you want to um, uh, it's five feet tall. Oh yeah, that's great. So I I charge about uh, I would charge fifteen bucks a linear foot for that. Fifth, I would charge fifteen dollars a foot for for the framing just for the steel, for that. Yeah. So Marat uses Marat uses these awesome aviation slip snips, and that's what he was showing there. So I, with my hands, I can't use them because that my I'm all weird. Like I got like, damn issues. I'm like just been, you know, football, rugby, construction. Like man, I just my hands are all messed up. So I can't use the ones that he has uh, because I can't get that long motion. But yeah, he's got awesome snips. Those they're long aviation snips. He can, he can cut a stud like snip, <laughs> like it's so they're really awesome and they cut nice and square. I, I tried to use them, but I just I just can't get the motion yet. I do want to pick some up and and practice more though with them because they are really neat. I use the small, um, like whisk snips, you know, just goop, goop, goop. it's just it's just easier for me, right? Yeah, you're very welcome, my man. So 18 gauge, yeah, no, I would just use uh, my abrasive. My I would use my chop saw. Uh, you know, like the abrasive chop saw with an abrasive blade that's what i would use um it's uh, it's um uh, but yeah using a if you have i know there's a, a um like a non-dust saw like it's a it's a cold cut saw like an x blade uh where you can put in a in a i don't know if you can put it in a in a normal like wood saw i'm not sure so it just takes a different uh there's a, like, I think it's something with the torque or something. Uh, like you need, like it just, it's a little different uh, type of saw you need for metal specifically uh, over wood, you know? Um, I'm still thinking even with the abrasive saw, you have to use the, the, uh, but yeah, you, you can cut, you can definitely cut 18 gauge with those blades. I do know that. Yeah. Lower, uh, lower RPM. Yeah. Thanks brother. Appreciate that. So or, there you go, David. I appreciate you guys. Yeah, RPMs. Thank you so much for that. Um, but yeah, I I think I, I think you still need to use use that blade on an abrasive saw. So the abrasive saws are, are luckily very inexpensive. The Makita one is the best one. Uh, go go with that. I'll show you the one even. <clears throat> Excuse me. Abra 
you soon? Or I always spell it with two B's. <laughs> oh man. So this this one is showing it at 300 bucks. That doesn't seem right. This, this, this price doesn't seem right. I might have paid 300 for it, but I don't know. I'm, I'm sure I got it on sale at 150, but I get things are a little actually a lot more expensive now. You guys know how inflation has been and all that, but this is the saw here I would use right there and with the abrasive blades. So it's a 14 inch. Yeah, 14 inch. That's the, that it's the one I use. So, and, it, and I love that, that handle. It's so nice. That's, that's why, that's why this saw is the best is the shape of the handle. <laughs> oh yeah. So you're, you'll be a pro man. You know exactly what's up. So when you're, when you're laying your bottom track, make sure the plywood is down and the membrane is down. Okay. Because that membrane, what happens is it's got to tie in. Okay. So, uh, you got to flap the, the membrane has to flap over like the blue skin has to flap over to tie into the front wall. And then it comes through. Okay. Cause your parapet is separate than, than, okay. So the membrane has to come over the plywood. So you have, somebody has to lay plywood. Your bottom track goes on or membrane it. And there's gotta be a piece that flips up, ties into the both sides and, and a side and a piece that ties into the front. So make sure the plywoods and the membranes is there, okay? Because yeah, the the you don't want the roofers will then tie into to the membrane as well, and and all and so and so and so, okay? And then yeah, usually the the backside gets plywood. You'll insulate them a foot above, like uh, twelve to sixteen inches, okay? Uh, even if it's five feet, you're you're only insulating um, above the roof, okay? So uh, your roof is gonna not gonna be five feet thick okay you just need to put a, put a one in a one foot to 16 inch piece of insulation in your parapets plywood weather treated okay on the on the on the inside and then the outside the dens glass ties into it right so and then there'll be there, there's going to be a an expansion joint on the dens glass side as well okay where the slot track is for the exterior wall there'll be a, a one inch or three quarter inch uh, expansion joint Okay, so the parapet has to line up, has to be beautiful, line up to that outside wall. Okay, you'll be good. You'll be good. If you have any, if you have any issues, just come to one of my videos, and leave me a comment. You uh, send me an email, uh, Chris at constructioncronies.com, and I'll do. I'll I'm be I'm gonna be around. I'll check my email. So I'm usually pretty quick about getting back to people. So. <clears throat> But then, yeah, dude. So, that's a couple tricks, anyways. I, I, um, this last little bit here was the, um, the job, the, the job I just did. This I just went and drywalled and taped a basement for a guy, a really nice guy, knowledgeable home homeowner, which was nice. Oh yeah, so yeah, that's funny. So chop saws too, right? So there's a flat side, and then there's the motor side. So you're always carrying that flat side to your body, okay? Always carrying the flat side to your body, okay? You never, you never carry the motor side to your body, okay? Because it's gonna be bump, 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 right? Yeah. No, you always carrying the flat where the where the where the guard is, the chop saw blade, the the blade guard. That's the side you hold to your body all the time. Whichever side you're carrying it on, the flat side always to your body. <laughs> But yeah, no, I, I had fun with this job. It was nice. I just took my time and, and did a beautiful job. Um, so many corners in this place. I, I mean, holy cow, inside corners, outside corners, 45s, like the bulkheads, there's the like create the bulkheads, the window wells. So there's two window wells, uh, uh, bulkheads, and then there's like all these 45s and little corners here and there. And then the stairwell itself, like each stair was drywalled basically and corner beaded and it was just you'll see it here after tape but i've used it i've used the tearaway on the inside to the window it looks beautiful you can see how that 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 reveal just matches up perfect all the way around so it's just it looks so nice it looks really really nice so no discord i don't know what's actually that's another thing i have to check on uh nightbot is not working uh nightbot's not working so i ha i have to check on my nightbot I, I forgot. I haven't. I haven't looked at that in a while. But yeah, thanks for reminding me, Dibs. I'm gonna. I'll make a note of that. Nightbot. <clears throat> uh, 
let's see here. Uh, a new page. Yeah, see, like all the 45s, I used a whole roll of the no coat, the flex, the 360 flex bead uh, on like, on this job. A whole roll, which is like, I think, 100 feet. <laughs> and, uh, um, yeah, I, I, I had, he had drywalled a little bit above the, uh, the shower and had a, 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 a cement board on the ceiling. I took all of that out, redraw, redid it all with blue board, made the holes tighter, you know. Yeah, right? No, that's okay. I need to, I need to figure that out. Nightbot, man. And then also, too, Zone Alarm and VMix Social. I need to get that working again. I'd love to be able to put comments back up on screen, man. That sucks. Oh, yeah, like, look at this stairwell. <laughs> like, right? Like, oh, man, it was, it was, it was, it was fun. It was fun. But yeah, nice little job. Just took my time, you know. I had 14 foot sheets and 12 foot sheets for the ceiling. So uh, the joints were very limited, um, right? Just like I was saying, you just want to expand your joints. There is one part, if I can just kind of show you something. So usually you want to stagger your, your butt joints, okay, when you're doing walls, but not always, not always. And then on those bulkheads, I'm using my skin blades at the end and coating the whole thing nice, like the whole thing, just on the face, right? Not the bottom, but the faces I'm, I'm coating with my 16-inch skin, uh, skin blade. Boom. Uh, let's, when I turn around here, you can see the 45s. That's the no coats. Of course, you still have to coat them, right? But <laughs> they only need one coat and then touch it right there. So you you can see here the the butts aren't staggered well that's okay you don't always have to stagger your butts okay so i got my butts stopping here um at this point i think i only had two 14s left so i wanted to come this way as much as i could 14 in, as 14 inches because there's only a little tiny a little little tiny joint here okay and then there's this build out it's better to have this little joint and then your other joint, which is also cut short because this is underneath a bulkhead, okay? So in total, this is maybe a little bit, maybe four feet or maybe a little bit more, maybe a little less, you know, but it's still it's still better than having a joint out here, okay? Down the middle of a, of a full wall, okay? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just better to put the joint in here so you don't have to stagger it. So I put my two 14s all the way over here and then uh, I did my first, I did my, my top row and then my bottom row, okay? Because I'm, I'm slamming my sheets up to the, as tight to the ceiling, okay? And then um, I'm using my lifter to get the bottom one up. But yeah, it's better. And then you don't have a joint over here either, right? Like, you, you know, it's just all right there in one spot. Super neat, tidy, and uh, nothing, nothing to worry about there. That's perfectly fine, guys. Okay, and it's actually it's actually recommended that you do it that way. Do not put the joints in the middle of a wall, okay? Like if you don't have to. And then that that's a tile surround, so you gotta you gotta tape the corners, okay? But um, just because of the paint on the on the ceiling, but there's tile going on around the surround and down the sides, okay? So you don't have to do uh, finish tape those. I I put. Fire, I still fire tape it though. I still put tape over the joints though. Uh, I just, it's just a little bit nicer, for, you know? So when they're putting a tile on, I don't know, they just mortar it and put their tile on or whatever. It's great. So yeah, I don't, I don't leave joints there. I'd still fire tape behind the tile. <sighs> yeah, that, see like that inside corner there, like that, that stairwell, I, is one of those times where I had that, I use my funk, I have this funky blade, I have to show it to you sometime, where you can get in those corners and, and do some cool stuff, right? Hey, thanks buddy, I appreciate that, Dibs. I super appreciate that, man, yeah. So, and when you're, when you're taping, so, uh, how, how I, how I charge for taping is I, I, the square footage of drywall, okay, exposed. So if it's double layer drywall, I'm not charging to tape both layers. I'm, I'm only charging the outside layer, okay? Uh, whatever that square footage is, I charge the whole distance. I don't, I don't, I don't say, oh, it's gonna take me 500 
a feed of, of, of two inch tape. I'm, I don't do it that way. I just go the whole wall distance and charge like 55, 65 cents for the taping. That's it. And then corner beads though, corner beads and, tr and plastic. I count every single piece by the foot and I charge $2 a foot to finish corner beads and any plastic, you know? But dudes, I got this product here. I wanted to kind of unbox it. It's not a very, it's not an expensive unit. I think it's like a hundred dollars on Amazon. Um, it's a, these guys actually sent me this. Like it was so like, I'm like, Hey, do you want to check out this security camera? And, and I'm always, I'm, I, I have security cameras all around my studio, um, and in the house. So I, uh, but I do need one for the back alleyway. So I'm like, yeah, sure. Send it over. I actually could use it. So I'm going to hook this up in the back alleyway. Uh, it was sent to me f uh, for free by this company. Um, they're not paying me i don't know i might get an affiliate type link i don't know but i am going to put my an amazon affiliate link in and like when i do a video on it i am going to put that on so let's check it out i haven't i haven't opened it yet um And yeah, I think I, I'm having it. I want, I did email them, uh, on Friday telling them, yeah, okay, I'm ready to work on the video now. So, um, the, the name of the company Viz, Vizy, 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 U is what I think it is. So Vizy, U V I Z I U U Y. So Vizy, U is what I think it is. So like v visible U or Vizy, U I see you type thing, but it's a solar, a solar powered, uh, security camera. It's got a onboard. You can have. Uh, you can store data to the cloud. It's got a. Uh, I think you can put a memory chip right in here too. Okay, so we're gonna. Well, obviously you try both. But I do like that. You know, I'll, I'll be. I'll be able to access it from my cell phone and and see the see the footage. And it does. It's like a PLZ. It it does move, and you can communicate, talk through it too, right? So that'll be interesting. Yeah, I get free stuff. Yeah, I know. I got that laser, that Dovo laser. I got for free. I just, I, they just want me to make videos, right? So, I told them, yeah, no problem. Send me in. I'll make a video. Tell you my honest opinion. So far, I really like the Dovo laser. It's got all the accessories that I need and whatnot, right? All right. So, busy, busy view. We got some literature here. So, quick start guide on the. The solar solar charger right on so it's this is the installation instructions as well for that but yeah I'm gonna install this this uh, like the next couple of days I'm gonna install this so cool and oh yeah cool 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 24-hour surveillance sticker right which is good uh, and then you got your full manual here yeah, so this is wireless security camera, VZ3PT2. But yeah, okay. Oh, I see. So here's your solar solar panel here. Oh, wow, this is nice. Okay, so it's actually very thin, very thin. So there, there's your solar panel there. And that's very, very interesting. Okay, so you got a, a USB-C connection with uh, looks like some sort of proprietary like connection like as well like it'll kind of snap in which is nice I'm gonna cover that back up yeah cuz I, I wanted to unbox it so I can take some pictures for thumbnails and stuff right oh it's actually a pretty big unit it's bigger than I thought it would be uh, all right let's just pull this out all right so there's your base Okay, I'll probably use different screws than that, but there's the base. I got, uh, like I said, my my walls are a foot thick, right? All right, some more uh, fasteners with uh, plugs. Uh, another connection cable, USB to USB-C. And then what's this guy here? There we go. Wow, crazy, that's a big unit actually. That's actually quite a big unit and it, and it turns. You can, you can uh, 
you can turn it like on your phone, you, you know, uh, you can turn it and it's got a speaker on it as well. So you can talk through, uh, it's got night vision and all that. Let's see here. Oh yeah. No, it, it rotates up and down and turns all around. That's pretty crazy. There you go. So yeah, mini micro SD, uh, you can put a micro SD card in there. And it looks like a couple of different settings, like switches there. But, uh, wow, yeah, that's a much bigger than I thought. And then, yeah, it's got a, it's got a base plate here as well. So, uh, oh, I see. So you can hang it. Oh, that's cool. Hey, right on. That's good. I got you. So you can go somehow. Oh, wait, duh. <laughs> of course, duh. Like that. Boom. Actually, that's really uh, pretty handy. That's that's going to be cool. Hey, calibration stickers in there and stuff. So, yeah, we'll get that installed this week and uh, see how that goes. I think I dig that because that, my other security camera over there is pretty cool. It's got it's really high quality. And um, but it doesn't I can't turn it, though, like this. I have to aim it. All right. So this will be fun. This will be really fun to play with. So thank you, uh, Vizuvi or Viziu, Viziu. Vizy, Vizy I'm gonna ask them exactly how to say their name, Viziu. And yeah, I'm gonna get that installed. But uh, pretty cool, man. And I and I like that sticker there. That's good. So cool, man. I got it out of the box. I'll be able to take product shots and then uh, get some thumbnails done and stuff. And then we'll install it and try it out and film the whole thing, give it an honest opinion on it. But yeah, for. A uh, hundred dollars, I don't think you can go wrong for a security camera, right? But yeah, built-in rechargeable battery. So yeah, it's a built-in battery that, you know, just got to charge out the solar, I guess. That's that's really cool. Uh, put it on my shelf somewhere. But uh, yeah, so that's about that. Yeah, so yeah, I'm sure it's a Wi-Fi. Yeah, uh, that uh, is a micro SD slot for memory. Um, and I do know uh, just by reading up on the literature that I that I have, um, it um, you it, you can record to cloud, but it does have a backup on board, which is nice too. Uh, but yeah, it'll it'll happen Wi-Fi. So my router is right here in the garage anyway. So it basically I'm gonna in, uh, it's gonna be on the other side of the wall right here, just looking into the alley. So the, finally, the once I got the alley covered, I got I got my all of my house under surveillance. Like that alleyway, the back alleyway is the last part. So it was good timing. I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll take it. Sweet man. <laughs> so yeah, no, it works out really good. And it, and if it and it does have like a, so if it, if it, um, it does have motion sensor as well uh, to uh, notify you as well. But, I mean, I live in a most most excellent neighborhood, uh, but you never know, okay? Like my studio is is quite packed full of equipment, and it's quite a quite a lot of money invested in here. So um, it's just peace of mind, right? And but yeah, no, I I got I got all I'll have all everything covered, which is good. I mean, it's a good peace of mind, eh? <laughs> well, uh, well, that was a fun stream, anyways, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope I was able to help some people out here. Um, I'm gonna, like I said, uh, I'll I'll um, I'll upload the replay as well. Okay, so it, if if we're having issues with it cutting out and choppy on the buffering and stuff with the live stream. I'm going to put, uh, I have, I'm recording the whole thing, so I'll be able to upload it. The whole, um, so what I'll do is I'll upload the whole thing, okay, so that it's just for reference or whatnot, and then, then this stream will be unlisted. I'll have this stream up until I upload the other one, which will be like today or tomorrow, and, uh, and then once I upload the, the replay, I'll, I'll unlist this one. Yeah, well, it was good to see you guys, man. Dibs, man. I'm so happy you made it. And uh, PHB Inc., uh, good luck tomorrow, man. Like I said, if you have any issues, shoot me an email. Uh, leave a comment or something. But maybe, maybe an email might be a little more better, you know. Um, but, uh, yeah, Meatball and David. Uh, David Santiago, man, good stuff. I, uh, uh, yeah, glad to help, guys. Uh, Lemon, my man. Woohoo! 
Talk to you every talk to you guys soon, and um, yeah, I'm gonna be streaming a little bit more until uh, like the season's a little slow this year, man. Like we haven't got really anything on the books, so uh, like construction wise, so I'm just kind of hanging low and estimating, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put another ad, ad out for work, you know. So if anyone's looking for small jobs or not, because I got these we got these big jobs, but we don't know when they're gonna start. Uh, we don't know like this one is like so delayed. I'm like shoot, I don't want to be caught. Having to go and do this, um, people not here for the music. No, definitely not. I know that. I'm. I just don't want it to be loud, and I, and that's why I, I'm glad I gotta remember to turn it off at the beginning of the stream. Uh, yesterday's stream, I forgot to turn it off, to turn it off, so the music was playing the whole time. But it was at least it wasn't too loud. But oh, there you go, Discord. Is it working now? No, oh, that's cool, man. No, but I appreciate you guys. Have a great start to your week and a great end to your Sunday. And uh, I'll see you all really soon, man. If you guys have any questions, leave them down below in the comments. Uh, you guys know I'll get back to you. Um, yeah. Yeah. Be well, everyone. We'll talk soon, all right? I'll talk to you later, Dibs. Really happy to see you, bro. Uh, just wanted to put that up for one second because I want to just check, the, check to see what it looks like after the fact. Here to support my friend, brother. Yeah, I super appreciate you. Always, man. Always, always, always. You take care, bro. Tell hi to mom, okay? Bye, guys. Tell me that you give a fuck about me. You don't even know nothing about me. Trying to force me on your timeline. You know you need to stop it. I live for more than attention. Might not be your trending topic. Put my worth in analytics. I admit that took a toll. I got addicted to scrolling. We know well that that get toxic. I got caught comparing me to people I don't even know. They say it's lonely at the top. Well, maybe then I'll focus on things that's more important. And let whoever think whatever and just keep it moving. These niggas won't work on their stuff. They'd rather see you losing. You'll never see me losing. Enough with the code switching. They hit me in my soul. Been on the road. So I'm ready to glow. So get to know me. Keep your head up. I want you to grow with me. See this glow on me. I want you to grow with me. I want you to grow with me.